Okay, we're going to talk today about film processing and what's involved with film processing. You have some objectives here. Make sure you read them and you understand and be able to answer the questions there. So with film processing, our goal is here to convert the latent image to the manifested image. So there's two basic types. There's manual and automatic. Manual is pretty outdated. Um, automatic processors are still semi-common. So with manual processing, um, you have a wet wet agent, then that's optional. You don't have to have a wet agent. You can go straight to the developer, which is the most important step. And then there's a stop bath or a rinse. Then you put in the fixer and then a wash and then there's drying. So the developer is the most important step. Converts the latent image to the manifested image. This is a test question, so make sure you get it right. So the developer converts the latent image to the manifested image. Um, it uses um, a reaction or a redox to do it. We don't go too much into that. So the developer chemicals um, has been stated by the ART that you no longer have to know the chemicals, but you need to know what the function of each step is. So with your um, developing agents, they're reducing agents. Your buffer is your swells your gelatin and controls your pH. The restrainer is an anti-fog. Your preservative controls the oxidation. Your hardener controls the emulsion and the swelling. Your sequestering <laughs> agent uh, removes the metallic impurities and stabilizes the developer. And then you have your solvent, which uh, dissolves the chemicals. So we're going to go into each one. Uh, the reducing agent, so the sensitivity spec gate, will be larger when more silver ions are deposited at the spec during exposure. Hang in there. This It'll all come together. So larger gate permits faster reduction of the internal silver ions. When the reduction is stopped at the appropriate time, the silver halide um, have accumulated black metallic silver in proportion to the size of the sensitivity spec gate. So there you go. It gives varying degrees of blackness. If it's um, too long, the film will be black. And if it's too short, it'll be light. So this gives you an idea. Here you have your, um, your latent image and then you put it through the processor and development and then it's fixed on the film. So chemical fog is the effects on film when unexposed silver highlights are reduced. Um, so you, we want to reduce as much chemical fog as possible. So with the developer, there's the um, buffering agents, so the accelerator or the activator, so it maintains the pH. Uh, you want it a medium. Uh, it softens and swells the film emulsions. So the chemicals used can either be sodium, um, carbonate. There's a lot of different things that can be used. You don't have to know what they are, um, but the developer solution is corrosive and should be neutralized with fixer or diluted with water. So the restrainer or the anti-fog um, agent so restrains the action of the developing agents to help prevent chemical fog. So um, this the whole thing in the developer is the restrainer just to keep the chemical fog down. The preservative decreases the oxidation of the reducing agents when combined with air. So the attraction of air is so strong that the developer solution remains effective for only about a few weeks and then it's no longer good. So some people float ping pong balls or something in there to reduce the surface uh, contact with the air. So there's the, the tank is deep and narrow. So those are the best. That way there's less contact with air. And the hardener keeps the film emulsion from sticking to the rollers. It controls the swelling of the gelatin to prevent scratches and abrasions and maintains the uniform thickness to assist in transport through the automatic processor. So weaker hardeners um, than found in the fixer. You'll find that the fixer has a lot of the same um, components to it. So the solvent, um, other components are mixed with solvent to create the developer's solution. So usually the solvent used is water. It has to be high quality water. Um, so squashing <laughs> agent used for developing solutions that are mixed from um, concentrate. So it keeps impurities found in top water for oxidizing. Um, and there's um, a lot of it is already pre-mixed, which is great. It's easy and it's more expensive. Uh, there's concentrate is cheaper but less convenient. Um, we buy the, the pre-mixed. Pre and this is what it looks like. You'll see the boxes in the dark room, so we can exchange that out. Um, fixing. 
So this is your fixer. So you have your developing tank and you have your fixer tank. So your fixer tank removes unexposed and undeveloped silver highlight crystals. It stops the development process and it permanently hardens the film emulsion for archival storage. So the clearing agent of the fixer removes unexposed and undeveloped silver highlight crystals. So film clearing. If not completely removed, film will have a milky appearance. Um, clearing time is defined as twice the time necessary for the milky appearance to disappear. Uh, that's exact, huh? So chemical agents must be um, used to do this. So the um, acidifier, the activator, or the buffer neutralizes any developer remain in the emulsion. It enhances the function of the clearing agent, the stop bath, to keep the reducing agents from continuing to function. So it maintains acidity, so you want low pH, um, medium for fixing agent, and the chemical agent must either be, um, it's like an acid typically. Your preservative, so it dissolves in, dissolves silver, uh, which is good, um, permitting it to continue to remove silver from the emulsion. It helps recycle the fixing agent and um, it is, uh, should be maintained uh, between 15 to 50. So the fixer component, so the harder or the tanning agent, so it permanently hardens the emulsion for a long time storage, prevents scratches and abrasions to the emulsion during the processing and maintaining a uniform thickness of the film during transport. So the hardening process is also called tanning. So if you ever hear tanning, that's it's the same thing as your hardener. All right, so your sesquestering, I cannot say that word, agent helps prevent uh, development of um, an alkaline uh, compound. So the solvent, other components are mixed with the solvent to create the fixer solution and once again water, high quality water. So the fixer will become saturated with silver from the emulsion so um, we'll not be able to accept any additional silver and requires a longer clearing time so you need to make sure that it's being uh, recycled and replenished. So automatic processors constantly replenish fixture solution to eliminate this problem and you'll learn about the silver reclamation process later on. So the washing step removes excessive uh, fixer and developer as possible. So the temp should be five degrees lower. So hyperretention can cause white powdery residue and brown staining. So we don't want that. So also, it's pre-mixed, what we purchased, so you can see the developer here and the fixer here, and we just pour them into the tanks. Drying, so um, the last step is the drying, and it forces the hot air over both sides of the film, and the temp is usually 120 to 150, so it's the final hardening of the emulsion and seals the super coat. Storage. So films are usually stored five to seven years depending on state laws and facility protocol. Miners can be five to seven years after they reach the age of 18. So um, we keep them five to seven years typically after they're 18. And that also depends on state and local laws, uh, federal laws too. So um, developer activity factors. So things that affect your developing uh, is your solution temperature, how long it's immersed in the developer, your solution concentration, um, the type of chemicals used, your solution pH, and your replenishment rate. So um, your processing time, so the develop immersion, developer Im immersion time should be maintained within 2 to 3% of manufacturer specification, and you can check that with the uh, time and solution tool or stopwatch. Your replenishment rate, so values indicate the flow meter should be within 5% of your manufacturer's specification. And your solution temperature, your developer temperature should not vary more than um, plus or minus 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit from manufacturer specification. Your fixer temperature should be maintained within uh, plus or minus 5 degrees of your developer. So um, whatever your developer temperature is, your fixer needs to be within plus or minus 5 degrees of that. So your uh, wash water should be either the same or about five degrees colder than your fixer. So your solution pH, your developer pH should be maintained between 10 and 11.5. Your fixer pH should be maintained between four and 4.5. 
and you can do this by checking on a piece of paper with the pH meter. Specific gravity, um, developers should be maintained at 1.07 and 1, to 1.1 and fixers should be maintained between 1.077 and 1.1, so basically the same. And um, this is your hyporetention test, so it should be performed at least every six months. Your chemical safety here, so OSHA hazards. Um, employees must be aware of the potential hazards from processing chemicals, so there's an MSDS on all the chemicals and it's posted for you. And you need to have um, PPE, so designed to protect employees for the workplace. You need to wear protective eyewear, rubber gloves, gowns provided when mixing or transferring these chemicals. The EPA um, requires users of developer solution to report quantity used. We have uh, limit the amount of silver that can be discharged into the water systems and require special permit for transporting the silver cartridges. The developer solution is the most hazardous of the processor solutions. Developer is dangerous to the eyes and a slight hazard to the skin. Fixer is dangerous to the eyes and can be a respiratory and skin irritant. Okay, so that's it on your processors, and we're going to go into the automatic processing um, next.